Okay guys, so I wanted to do uh, example 6 and example 8 from the section 1.3 and 1.4 note sheet. Uh, these two are questions that lots of students struggle with, so I just wanted to make a video here in case we don't get to cover this totally in class that you can um, know how to do these questions. Okay. So uh, example 6 says, if the zeros of a quadratic polynomial f of x add up to 5 and multiply to 10, what must f of x be? All right, so my answer should be f of x equals some quadratic trinomial. All right, and they're saying the zeros of the polynomial, so zeros are uh, numbers I plug into the polynomial to make it equal to 0, uh, add up to 5 and multiply to 10. So we can call those zeros something, and we have a name for these already, p and q, right? p and q from our intercept form of a quadratic polynomial. And so um, let's do with p and q what they say. p and q add up to 5, so p plus q give me 5, and they multiply to 10. p times q gives me 10, all right? Now, what we have here is just a simple system of equations, which you learn to work with in Algebra 1. p plus q is 5, p times q is 10. So, our approach here is this. Let's solve one of the equations for one of the variables and substitute it into the other equation. Uh, and so it turns out that this is the strategy to use. Solve for p or q, and you get if I solve this one for p, I get 5 minus q, okay, 5 minus q. And so now I have a new uh, equation here, an expression for uh, p in terms of q. And so I solved this equation, so now I have to take that uh, result and substitute it into this equation for p. So if I do that, I get uh, p here, which is... 5q, 5 minus q, sorry, uh, times the q that was there already, this q was there already, equals 10. Then just distribute the q and see what happens. So I get 5q, distribute this and distribute this, minus q squared equals 10. Now this doesn't look like a quadratic polynomial, it must be equal to f of x. That's not really what I've got going here yet. But uh, we can make it look like that. So if we manipulate this a little bit, uh, actually I'm going to subtract. I'm going to add q squared and subtract 5q from this side, and do the same here. Add q squared and subtract 5q from this side. Then this becomes zero. They both cancel. On this side I have q squared minus 5q, and that's a plus 10. Plus 10. Okay. So now I have identified um, that this polynomial has zeros of p and q. Okay, p and q, uh, these two, using the information they gave me, generate this polynomial. Okay, so p is 5 minus q, and p times q is 10. And so basically I'm saying, instead of zero here, Okay, they are the, they are the uh, roots or the zeros that gave me this function. Uh, the answer to the question is q squared minus 5q plus 10. All right. Now, this doesn't factor like a traditional quadratic polynomial you'll be working with, but that's an interesting problem. And you frequently have to work backwards from solutions to get a function. All right. Okay, that's example 6, and then we can tackle example 8. So example eight, uh, it's a little bit of a, a, a long, they call it an extended solution problem, okay? But still very, very interesting, very applicable, good problem solving, good practice of your skills. All right, so uh, again, don't give up when you see long questions like this with lots of words. Persevere, try, you can do it. If you just try hard enough, Try long enough, even if you fail, that's okay. You'll learn how to do problem solving as we go on, okay? Don't give up with problem solving. So in any case, um, let's just use the information given to us and see if we can make sense of this question. It says, uh, a US Postal Service guideline states that for rectangular package like the one shown, this one, 
Okay. Um, the sum of the length, the sum of the length and the girth cannot exceed 108 inches. All right. Suppose that for one such package, the length is 36 inches and the girth is as large as possible. Okay. So, information there. What's the girth of the package? Okay. So it says, uh, I don't know, girth here. We can actually figure out an expression for girth in terms of W and H. But I'm going to use the information they gave me here to write something down. Just write something down and see what happens. Sum of the length, so the length plus the girth, okay, sum of the length and the girth, length plus the girth, cannot exceed 108 inches, okay? Then they say that the length is 36 inches and the girth is as large as possible. So the girth, sum of the length and the girth um, is as large as possible, okay? So length and large as possible girth, but it cannot exceed 108. So that's what I get. And now we know that the length is 36 inches, told here. So we have 36 plus the girth equals 108. So what's the girth? Well, that's a simple calculation. Subtract 36 both sides, and you get that the girth is 108 minus 36, and I think that's 72. Okay, 72. So the girth is 72. Okay, that seems not too bad. We answered the first question. Okay, we didn't even need to use the picture really. Uh, and then it says, write an expression for the package's width in terms of height. Width in terms of height. Okay, so what that means is I want an equation that has W equals to something to do with an H and possibly some other numbers. That's what it means to write an expression for the width in terms of height. W equals something to do with h. Okay, But there can only be those two variables in the expression, w and h, and some numbers maybe, but no other variables. Right? And so uh, that's fine. That's what they want us to do. The answer must be something like this, w equals. Right? But now where do I go from here? How can I relate w and h and all that kind of stuff? So the clue is here. I have W here and H here, so I have to do something with that. But I also have the girth here. But now I already know what the girth is. It's 72. And so I can say that the girth, if you look at that picture there, is W here, W here, H here, and H here. So the girth is just the perimeter of a rectangular shape. Okay. So we know that the girth is W plus W, 2W, plus H plus H, 2H. Right? But I also know that the girth is 72, so I can plug this in here. Right? So the girth is 72 equals to 2W plus 2H. And you can see that all of these can divide by 2. So I divide them by 2. And then you get 36 is W plus H. Well, now that looks almost like what we were looking for. I just have to solve it for W. Okay. So if I subtract the H, I get the answer I was looking for. Okay. W equals 36 minus H. So that's what we were looking for here. W equals 36 minus H. All right. So I have the width W in terms of H only and some numbers. All right, so that's the first question answered. There we go, we did it, okay? We answered this question. Then it says, write an equation for giving the package's volume in terms of H. Volume only in terms of H. So that, again, means I need something like this. Volume equals something to do with an H and maybe some numbers, okay? Only On this side can only be H's and numbers, basically is what it's saying. So we know that uh, from geometry and algebra one that the equation for the volume of a of a cube or a rectangular cube in this case is uh, length times width times height. So the volume is, but now I know some of these things already. I know that the length that they gave us up here is 36. So I can use 36 times 
the width, but I have an expression here for width in terms of h, 36 minus h, and h just stays there. Okay, so what they asked me to do right here, write an expression for the volume in terms of h, I did. I did it. There it is. Okay. Now this maybe not look, maybe doesn't look very nice, but uh, we can play with it a little bit. Actually, what we can do is take this and factor out a negative one. If I factor out a negative one in the front, actually what happens is I get h minus 36 times h. Okay. It's just a little trick. You don't really have to do this, but it just makes things look a little bit more like what we're used to. Okay, so what this tells me is I just took a negative out of here. So if I distribute this back in, I get negative h plus 36. Well, negative h plus 36 is what I have. Okay, so doing that little step maybe makes things clearer for you. Let's see how you feel about that in a second. Okay, so here's my expression for volume in terms of h. I answered the second part of the question B. Okay, and then lastly it says... Uh, what height and width maximize the volume of the package. So you have to realize what's happening here. This is a quadratic equation. Okay, I have h times h. That's an h squared. This is a quadratic equation uh, in terms of v and h, volume and height. Okay, volume and height. So uh, I think if you wrote this in a different way, maybe you'd see the quadratic equation appear here. So let me let me do that. Volume equals... Uh, negative 36 and let's leave that there and distribute the h in here and what you would get is h squared minus 36 h okay maybe now this looks more like a quadratic equation to you so we know it's a quadratic equation and actually this is in a specific form that we also know what this is this is intercept form okay so this is h minus 0 and that's h minus 36 so i have the two intercepts so to find a maximum, okay, maximum volume and dimensions that maximum the volume, maximize the volume, uh, we have a vertex. The vertex of the function will give us the maximum. So the x coordinate of the vertex will maximize the volume, and uh, the y coordinate of the vertex is the maximum volume. But we don't have x and y, okay? We have double a v and h, but that's okay. This is like a y, this is like an x. That's fine, you can work in those terms, no problem. So let's answer the first question, okay? Let's answer the first question. Uh, what height and width maximize the volume? So that means go and find the x-coordinate, or in this case, the h-coordinate of the uh, vertex. So we know if I have uh, this situation um, where I have... I want to find the x, or in this case, the h-coordinate uh, of the vertex. I just take the two intercepts and go, the h-coordinate of the vertex must be halfway between them. Okay. Now, we had a formula for this, p plus q over 2. Well, p for us here is 36. That's our p. And q for us here is 0. That's our q. Okay. So I do... 36 plus 0 over 2. And that gives me the h coordinate, the height coordinate that maximizes the volume. Okay? And that would be 36 over 2, which is 18. So when h, when the height is 18, the volume is maximized. Now, that's the first part of the question, height. But then they say, what's the width then? But we had an equation up here for width. So if I bring this down, I can also find the width that maximizes the volume. The width would be uh, 36 minus the height. But we just said that the height here that maximizes the volume is 18. So width is 36 minus 18, which is 18. Okay. So we answered that part of the question. Both of them are answered Okay. for the first part of C. Now, we still have to find what is the actual maximum volume. Okay, and so if we go here, uh, let me switch colors, something different. Okay, now I want to find the maximum volume. So we know that to find the maximum uh, value for any quadratic function, 
um, to find that y coordinate, I substitute the maximum x coordinate into the function. Okay, so let me clean this up and let's do that. Let's do that. So here's my function that I came up with earlier that we used for all of this, and that's this function right here. Okay, so we're going to use this function right here, and we're going to plug in the maximum h coordinate into the volume function. So volume is negative 36 times h minus 36, I'm just copying it down, times h minus 0, which is h. Okay, And then if I plug in 18 here, 18 here, and 18 here, I should get the maximum volume of uh, the package. Okay, That would be the v coordinate or the y coordinate, in this case, of the uh, vertex, which is the maximum volume. So volume equals negative 36 times 18 minus 36 times 18. And that tells me that the maximum volume is negative 36 times negative 18 times 18. Well, if you just simplify that on your calculator, you get 36 times 18 times 18. Uh, the negatives cancel, negative times the negative and the positive. So I get 11,664. Okay, 11,664, and this is inches cubed, right? inches cubed, because volume is uh, inches times inches times inches, okay? So we know that volume is a cubic measure, right? So uh, the maximum volume is 11,664 inches. Right, and just visualizing this again, this is a volume function, okay, and it has h and v coordinates basically. So we found the vertex is what we did. The vertex is 18 and 11,664. This is the h coordinate, this is the v coordinate. So please don't be afraid of switching away from x and y for a function to problem solve because we frequently want to use quantities. Where the letters mean something. Volume means V means volume, H means height. So it's more meaningful than just purely X and Y. I hope this helps you guys.